Welcome to NativeScript Community Chat for April 7th, 2021. It's been a while since we've done one of these. I think the last one we did was in December of last year. And um, a lot has happened uh, between then and now. We want to give a couple follow-up updates from NativeScript 8 release and also mention that a patch also went out yesterday, uh, which included some other fixes. Um, but first, what we want to uh, talk about is actually for those uh, on the Slack channels, Discord channels, many people have been asking, you know, how to help. And there's lots of ways to help for sure. Um, the docs have been uh, really fun to revamp, I should say, but they'll be continually improving. So one of the biggest things that were, I would say, difficult to do as we were preparing for NativeScript 8 is try to get a setup with the docs that was easier to iterate on and would provide a future pathway to easily make changes, big changes to the docs uh, in really substantive ways that were difficult before. And this repo, we just opened up public this morning. Um, this is where the new docs uh, reside. So we'll take a quick peek at those and kind of how they're set up and really how easy it is to submit a pull request if there's something that uh, is off, either it's a misspelling or something that you think is worded weird, you can definitely submit uh, any pull requests for anything like that. Um, in addition to post issues here for things that you believe need to be added or in omissions. And um, let me show uh, how this is run and take a look at the actual code in this doc setup. So it uses Vitepress, uh, which is a view based uh, setup just to build and deploy the docs. Um, but the code itself for all the docs are just markdown files. So everything that's in here is just in a standard markdown file. Um, any of these can be modified really uh, pretty easily. Even the uh, structure for the table of contents can be modified. The config.js here provides a breakdown of the sidebar and everything that's in the docs. So this is certainly open for people to provide suggestions on if they think it's not um, even set up uh, well in terms of the navigation. Certainly, uh, this is all open for anyone's uh, interpretation. And us ourselves will probably make modifications of this over time uh, to continue to improve it. But uh, once the repo is cloned, you can run yarn dev, and this will actually start a local server on 3000. And if we take a look at that, we can see we get the docs here and everything is here and you can make changes uh, to any of these files and see that reflect here. And that's really as easy as it is to, you know, make a change and tweak something in the docs. And um, once a pull request gets merged down and deployed up, it will automatically deploy. So pretty quick, uh, simple and easy to make modifications and get those out uh, on the site. And just so everyone knows, we are continually looking and um, adding things to the docs from here on out for certain things. Some redirects went out to help. I know many had uh, mentioned about some redirects from the old docs and some of those have been posted. There'll probably continue to be some more redirects put in place, but um, we do believe and are, are excited to have this in place um, because we know the docs had needed uh, some attention for quite some time. Um, so that's an update on the docs. And again, if you're out there wondering, you know, how to help and if you see something, you can certainly clone or fork this uh, repo and submit a pull request and we'd be happy to get it merged in and get it out there. Um, some other people have asked around Core. Uh, Core also has a similar um, way to contribute in terms of uh, running locally and running some of the sample apps and kind of testing changes in Core. Um, Alex Ziskin over at Native Scripting had posted a YouTube video back in the fall on how to contribute to Core. And we'll leave this link here in uh, the slide notes that we post up here and we'll put it in the description. Um, and this describes really how to contribute really uh, from Core. So if there is anything people are interested in in terms of modifying with the Core repo, uh, that video covers how to do that. Um, just like with the docs, we did a pretty thorough uh, reorganization of core in general. 
and made it a bit easier to live sync and make changes. So any change that uh, someone is interested in exploring, maybe you're just curious and wanna poke around at Core, see what it's all about, see what its capabilities are. Um, again, that contributing doc uh, or the contributing video that was posted here um, by Alex back in the fall is pretty helpful to see how to do that. Um, and we welcome anyone to explore that. You know, Core is, is fascinating and there's a lot of really interesting things um, in there and a lot of interesting capabilities, of course, it can do. Um, all I'll state on this call is Core's responsibility is really to provide a nice, consistent, streamlined API for iOS and Android. And as most in native script know, Core is sort of a convenience layer. Um, it's sort of a plugin in and of itself for native script as a whole. You know, native script uh, functions in the run times on its own. Uh, there's really, Core doesn't provide a necessity as much as it provides a convenience um, to do native script development. So um, Core is just a JavaScript library that has some nice consistent APIs. So that is uh, really the biggest ways to help is around the docs, the docs repo, which is now open. And that's linked to from the core repo as well. Uh, and also of course, anything with core, um, we've had a lot of great contributions in, in 8.0 that made that possible, certainly with seven as well. And uh, we, we love working with people, collaborating with people on all sorts of interesting aspects around native script and uh, welcome that anytime. Um, so the next update is on HMR. We've had several people ask about uh, HMR. HMR is uh, working in Webpack on the beta, but there's still some other polish points we're doing with it. So there are some things that are still underway and it's largely why we kept Webpack in beta uh, currently. Webpack 5 is of course still a, a pretty new aspect of uh, integration with a lot of front end projects. And uh, this being a big step forward for us with Webpack, uh, their latest version with five. And so we wanna make sure that everything with HMR is up to par with the latest of um, kind of the Webpack world in general, but um, we're still exploring several aspects around HMR. So likely when that stabilizes and when we get a final uh, version that, that has HMR well-rounded for all the flavors, then that'll probably go final. So the next update is unit testing. We've had several people ask about this. Uh, some had asked about this in the uh, seven series last year, and we do have some changes in unit test runner that makes that possible. And myself and Eduardo on the TSC, we're, go we're going to do a blog post on this and also add a revised section on the docs for unit testing, just dedicated to unit testing. In fact, the unit test runner uh, interface was also improved uh, just visually looks better, a bit more pleasing to work with. And uh, we want to try to cover uh, unit testing in general, just with native script, but also uh, with some front end flavors specifically. So be on the lookout for that this month for sure. Um, we have been touching base on this already. And most likely there will be another version of the unit test runner published with some final uh, touches on that. And we'll be sure to, to notify everyone when that post is up that has all the details on how to unit test there. Um, let's see. The last thing that I'll mention, and it was mentioned a bit last year, just kind of looking ahead for 8.1 and any subsequent eight uh, minor releases that we do throughout the next six months up until 9.0. The RFCs have been a great way to get involved in discussions, uh, submit issues, ideas that you may have. Um, it's really a, a completely wide open discussion in terms of the future in general. Um, feel free to have a look on what's been discussed so far, but also pose a new discussion on anything that you're interested in. Um, there are several ideas that are circulating uh, for 9.0 already and uh, definitely feel free to get involved in any of that anytime. And in fact, Webpack 5 was a great example of an RFC discussion that really brought along how to do Webpack 5 and bring it holistically together with NativeScript that started as an RFC uh, last year. And it really was through that discussion that kind of helped formulate uh, how Webpack 5 came to be integrated with NativeScript. So it was a good example of how RFCs can really um, set the stage for something to come uh, in the future. 